Hi everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Gadget Lab. I am Michael Calori. And I'm Nathan Olivares Giles. He's the new guy. I am the new guy, it's true. Yeah. Started at Wired this week, moved here from Los Angeles. Yep, yep, and I am, I feel like I'm the only Dodgers fan in all of San Francisco. I can't believe you just admitted that. <laughs> yeah. Was that a bad thing? <laughs> am I already messing up here? What's going on? Oh yeah, well around here it is. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Nathan has brought a new tablet from Samsung to show us. Uh, after we take a look at that, Robbie Baldwin is going to be here and he's going to talk about zombie maps. And then Alexandra is going to come on at the end of the show and we're going to talk about a new case for the iPad. So if you have a fancy new iPad, stick around. We'll be giving one away at the end of the show. But first, we have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 270. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy Tab, Tab 2, 2 7.0. 7.0. That is a terrible product name. It's it's not the easiest to say or remember. <laughs> and it's actually a follow-up to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.0 Plus, which came out late last year. It's really really similar. The one difference, you know, physically is there's not an LED flash on the back as there was in the um, 7.0 Plus. Okay. But on the 7.0, uh, the new, the two version, uh, you get ice cream sandwich, which is fantastic. Ah, it's latest, so it's an ICS tablet. It is an ICS tablet. It's the Thank latest God. version of um, Google's Android operating system, which is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Um, there are some slight user interface changes that I don't like as much as regular old ICS, but it doesn't really detract from you know, the experience. It's still a good tablet. Mm -hmm. um, the best part though, honestly, is that it sells for 250 bucks. Wow, so that's a pretty hot price point. Yeah, it's a really good price point. Um, actually cheaper than I thought it was gonna be. And it kind of puts it just slightly above the Amazon Kindle Fire right. and the Nook tablet, which each go for 200 bucks. And have uh, decidedly subpar uh, user experiences compared to raw ICS, right? Yeah, basically Amazon and Barnes and Noble, they're taking Android, they're altering it hugely so that you can basically really stay tuned in buying stuff from them. Mm -hmm. But this is just Android as you know it and maybe possibly love it, I'm not sure. Okay, well, uh, I've been pretty impressed with ICS so far. Yeah, I, I, like, it. I like Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna do a full review, but we have a hands-on on the Gadget Lab right now. Cool, so you can read that uh, on wired.com slash Gadget Lab. And then there was also a, a second component, right, to this, there was a, like an iPod style player. Yeah, Sam device. Samsung, well, they're going to have the um, Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.0, mm -hmm. which is a larger uh, tablet as well. Um, and then, or actually that might be a 10.1. And then <laughs> there is the Samsung Galaxy Player 3.6 and the Samsung Galaxy Player 4.6. So like a three and a half inch and a four and a half inch kind of mini tab, like a, an iPod yeah. Touch. It's like the Android phone without the phone. You know, you've got all right. your apps and they say it's primarily a music player, but you can do everything that you can do. It's like, like an iPod Touch, yeah. This is a big phone, see? Hello? <laughs> it kind of is. Or it's a small Galaxy Note. Yeah, does it come with the stylus? There is no stylus. Thank Actually, God. Samsung hates it when you call it stylus. They want you to call it S Pen. Well, we were, we they were at an event yesterday and they were like, don't call it stylus, it's different, it's an S Pen. So. Doesn't matter, we'll call it whatever the hell we want. I like that. It's a stylus. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for bringing that on and welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me here. Happy sure, here. Uh, we're happy to have you. Thanks. And uh, now we're gonna bring out Robbie, to talk about zombies, his favorite topic. All right. Hey, Robbie's here. Hi. And uh, Robbie wrote a really interesting story on the Gadget Lab this week about zombies and how to escape certain death when the inevitable zombie apocalypse occurs in your city. Now there's a map online called the Map of the Dead. It is a zombie apocalypse uh, survival guide as far as I'm concerned. It shows uh, zombie danger zones, which is really any place where there's a population. P zombies come from people. Where there's people, it's a danger zone. But more importantly, it shows you locations for supplies, um, military bases, gun shops, which is very important when the zombies are coming. And liquor of course, stores. liquor stores. It has <laughs> liquor stores, uh, Molotov cocktail, Funyuns. Funyuns. Funyuns are, they're going to keep us all alive. And uh, most important is cemeteries, which is the number one spawn point for zombies at the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. Okay, so basically it's, it's an online map that shows me where to go to get refueled, where to avoid, 
And are there like meeting places or things like that for other humans? Or now they don't. They the uh, the developers are talking about adding user generated content. So you mm -hmm. could add like, hey, let's all meet here, or you know, this is a good place to hide, or mm -hmm. this is where some liquor stores are. Now it's using Google's APIs mm -hmm. and some search APIs, so it doesn't have every store in the area. But that's kind of good because you want to you know save your little bodega for yourself. Right. Right. Well, I would appreciate the uh, the ability to add user generated content uh, yeah. because then I could mark like uh, you know things like fish concerts <laughs> as places to avoid <laughs> in the zombie apocalypse because uh, you, you know, won't be able to tell which is which. Well, well, you know, a lot of fish fans are vegans. You know what vegan zombies eat? Grains. Grains. Uh, that was just a bad excuse to put that joke in there. Um, so uh, tell tell me a little bit more about the the cities that you identified. In now, the, in I, the story. I identified New York, Chicago, and San Francisco, just kind of looked at them and seen how those cities can survive, or the, you know, the population can survive. I also looked at LA, but because of all the gridlock, those people are all doomed. I'm really sorry, LA. <laughs> LA, LA. I will miss you. <laughs> LA is doomed. LA is doomed because everyone's just stuck in traffic and it burns in the window. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of LA. They're all zombies anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks, Robbie. Uh, and if you want to check out his uh, story about the map of the dead, map of the dead, and all the exciting, uh, and, and look at all the exciting places in the world where you can hide from zombies, uh, you can read his story this week on the Gadget Lab. Uh, now let's bring on Alexander to show us some groovy cases. Ha You're not Alexandra. I'm not. <laughs> she had to go to the liquor store to stock up for the zombie apocalypse. Oh, she's been reading too much Wired Gadget Lab stories about zombie apocalypse. I think so. Places it's... to refuel, like the liquor store. Uh, this is Christina. Christina has with her, what are these? These are Pad and Quill iPad cases, and they're really nice. We like these a lot. Yeah, kind of has a, a reminiscent of a moleskin book approach to the iPad case. It's like a hardcover. Yeah. It's uh, surrounded by wood. These are around 80 bucks. Um, we have two different models. This one folds into a stand very nicely. There's two different levels. You can have it, you can have it a little bit more upright or a little bit at more of an angle. Mm. And then this one has a little folder inside. So if you've got some papers, maybe you're taking your iPad on a presentation or something and you've got wanna show stuff on your iPad and you have like papers to give out. Or if you want to carry product brochures. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, also, I really like this. This is kind of cool. It's it's an e it's like a little pull tab uh, that uh, makes it easy to pull your pull your iPad out. Uh, but it's also when it's closed, it sort of looks like an old school bookmark. So people actually might possibly be fooled into thinking that you're actually carrying a book around with you. I've actually seen someone on the bus, they had a Kindle and they actually carved out a book and had their Kindle on the inside of a book. I could tell it was homemade because there were like there was the shine of some tape on there. But it was cool. I took a picture, I Instagrammed it. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So did they actually take an old moleskin and, and carve it out? Just an old book. I think Just it was in book. German. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow, how innovative! Yes. Uh, well, if you don't, if you're not feeling particularly innovative, uh, you can of course get these at Pad and Quill. And we should also mention that uh, the design is reminiscent of these cases, which are quite popular, uh, which is a similar design from Dodo, Dodo case. case. Uh, a lot of people have these. As a matter of fact, when we first got the Pad and Quill cases in, people were like, "Ooh, is that a Dodo case?" And no, it's a new Pad and Quill case. Uh, they're handmade in Minneapolis. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Very American fancy. made. So considering this makes your iPad, oh yeah, also we should mention these are for iPad 3. Yes, they fit the iPad 2 and the iPad 3. Yeah, although They're... the iPad 3 fits better than the iPad 2 does. So if you have a new iPad, an iPad 3, um, that's, that's, what, that's what these are, are made for. And I think it's the price is a little bit higher on the iPad 3 um, cases. I think they're 100 but the older ones and the ones for the other devices are a little bit under $100. Yeah. And uh, it's still affordable if you carry for your gadget. So anyway, considering this is a, a literary uh, gift or a literary uh, gift for yourself, we have a literary trivia question. Now you can, we have two of these to give away, these very ones that we have right here. Uh, and you can win by tweeting your answer to at Gadget Lab. Or you can just leave a comment on the post uh, in which this podcast appears at the top of. Anyway, here's the question. 
What Arthur C. Clarke novel shares its name with a Pink Floyd song title? Ooh. Ooh, cheating, as always, is encouraged. So again, if you know the answer to the trivia question, which Arthur C. Clarke novel shares its title with a Pink Floyd song? Tweet at Gadget Lab or leave a comment on this post. And uh, you might win. And otherwise, you lose. But come back next week. <laughs> yes, we'll have more gadgets, maybe an iPad case. Yeah, maybe, maybe another giveaway. Maybe something. See you. Thank you.